Good morning. I'm joined today by members of my command staff, Mayor Malik Evans, Mike Curran from ATF, Chief Stefan Napolitano from the Rochester Fire Department, Special Agent in Charge Jeremy Bell from the local branch of the FBI. Over the past 48 hours, the Rochester Police Department Major Crimes Unit, our Joint Terrorism Task Force members, and the Arson Task Force, which you remember I said yesterday, the Arson Task Force is police detectives, fire investigators, and ATF is also a normal part of the Arson Task Force. They've been conducting an extensive investigation into the tragedy that occurred on New Year's Eve outside the Kodak Theater on Westridge Road. The following is a synopsis of the information we have learned thus far. Again, it must be noted, we are still gathering information, and all of this is preliminary. All evidence point to the suspect as 35-year-old Michael Avery from the Syracuse, New York area. The suspect passed away last night. He has not been scientifically identified, but we are in the process of confirming his identity. We have been in contact with his family since yesterday. Avery traveled to Rochester, New York in his personal vehicle on or about December 27th and checked in at the Wood Spring Suites in the town of Greece. On December 29th, at about 2.45 p.m., Avery rented the Ford Expedition from a car rental agency at the Rochester Airport. On December 30th, between 9 a.m. until about 6 p.m., Avery made at least a half dozen purchases of gasoline and gas containers from different locations throughout the Monroe County and Ontario County areas. Thus far, our information has shown he was alone when making these purchases. On January 1st, about 12.52 a.m., Avery was operating the rented Ford Expedition eastbound on Westridge Road. At about this time, two Rochester police officers assigned to the concert were on traffic post and stopping traffic to allow for pedestrians to cross. At this time, Avery sped up, crossed into the oncoming lane of traffic, and appears to have intentionally been driving towards the pedestrian crossing. At about the same time, a rideshare vehicle containing two passengers in the back seat was pulling out of the theater parking lot and was struck by Avery's expedition. <clears throat> this created the chain of events that followed, leading to the death of the two rear seat passengers of the rideshare vehicle and the injuries of at least nine pedestrians. That number has changed since yesterday as more people have come forward to report their injuries. Yesterday, a search warrant was executed on the hotel room rented by Michael Avery. There was no suicide note recovered during the search of the hotel room. An additional search warrant was executed on Avery's personal vehicle, which was recovered at the airport parking garage. Investigators are still combing through evidence recovered from his vehicle, but nothing thus far has been recovered that provides any additional insight into why this occurred. Although the motive behind the crime remains unknown, the conversations we've had with his family so far leads us to believe that Avery may have been suffering from possible undiagnosed mental health issues. At this time, we've not been able to identify that there was anyone else involved in the crime or that it was part of a larger plot. Additionally, we have not uncovered any information leading us to believe that the actions of Michael Avery on New Year's Eve were motivated by any form of political or social biases. It must be noted this is an ongoing investigation and additional information may be developed. We're going to share his photo today <clears throat> and ask that anyone with additional information about this tragedy or about the suspect's motivation, please contact the RPD Major Crimes Unit at 428-7157. There's also an email, and this will be on the written release when we put it out, but it's majorcrimes at cityofrochester.gov. Mayor Evans is going to say a few words, and then I will come back and take some questions. Just let me again reiterate my uh, thanks to our uh, law enforcement partners and to the Rochester Police Department, Rochester Fire Department, um, FBI, ATF, all of our partners that are here for their work on this uh, unfortunate case. Uh, as the chief said, there are still many unanswered questions 
Uh, we hope to continue to provide updates as we have them. Uh, I have been getting inundated with questions as to why this individual would choose, number one, Rochester, New York, why he would choose to do this on, a, uh, on, on New Year's Day, and why um, he would appear to target concert goers trying to have a great time to bring in the new year. Those are all things that we don't have questions. Uh, th th those are all questions that have been raised and things that we just don't have answers to yet. Uh, but as I've said, um, the Evans administration is big on transparency. So we wanted to make sure today that we provide uh, an update on all the information um, that we have available now because there, there has been tons of stuff that has been uh, out there that has been unsubstantiated. But what the chief just laid out is the facts. But the most important thing today, I think, for us as we go into the new year is to remember the victims of this horrific accident. Remember, these folks were going to see a Grateful Dead tribute band, and they were expecting to be able to ring in the new year and have a good time. But instead, we have individuals that are now going to be burying family members, and we have people who have now life-altering in injuries uh, because of the choices um, that this suspect made. So I hope that uh, Rochester and the, and the broader community continues to pray for the families um, that are mourning the loss of their loved ones and that we pray for the speedy recovery of the lives, uh, of, of the lives that have been impacted um, by this tragedy. This is, this is a very traumatic experience, not only for the people who experienced this, but also the first responders. It should be noted that there were off-duty Rochester police officers um, that sprung into action to try to render aid to the indiv individual that was responsible for this heinous act, not even thinking about their own safety, but running to try to put out the fire of the inferno that he started. So even in the midst of this despicable tragedy, there is um, a reminder that there still is goodness in this world of the individuals that sprang into action without thinking about their own safety to try to save others. Um, so our thoughts and prayers are with the families and the victims. We will continue to provide updates as we have them. We did that yesterday. Um, and as we get more information, um, we will continue to provide them. There are lots of questions. I have lots of questions. Everyone up here still has lots of questions. Why Rochester? Why Syracuse? Why all the gas cans? These are all things that um, will continue to be um, investigated. And as the chief has said, this is an ongoing investigation until it's not. So this is an ongoing investigation until it's not. But we will continue to provide updates um, as, as we have them. And the last thing I want to say is that anyone during these festive holiday seasons, sometimes people have issues dealing with some of the challenges that they have, I want to encourage folks in the Rochester community, the broader community, to seek help if you need it. There is so much help out there. 988 is a number that can be called for anyone that is experiencing suicidal issues, mental health issues. There are resources that are out there. And I sometimes think in, these, in, in, in our broader communities when we see these types of tragedies, what could happen if people seek out those resources that are available to them? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Questions? It's based on our conversations with the family. That, as I said, we've been talking to them since uh, since yesterday. Um, <clears throat> there are parts of the investigation I'm still not going to comment on, um, so we'll we'll leave that for now. No journal, no suicide note. What ties did they have to Rochester in this community? That we we don't know. Again, as the mayor said, why why Rochester? Why this venue? We just we just don't know. Um, well, again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna comment on his his family his family uh, business. I don't I don't know, um, and no no contacts with law enforcement. Chief, now that you you sort of 
I don't want to put words in your mouth. Have you ruled out that he, there was any social or political agenda? There is, is there any nexus to terrorism here at all? Because I know that word has been thrown out a lot. Um, what do you want to say about that? Well, um, I'll, uh, I'll let uh, Agent Bell comment on that. But as I said, we have not found any of that yet. It's the investigation will continue. We have not found that. Chairman, do you want to comment on that? Sure. Chief, thank you. Good morning. So I can confirm our Joint Terrorism Task Force is involved, but that's not a Will the FBI still be part of the investigation then, or do you hand it back over? Absolutely. The FBI and our Joint Terrorism Task Force will see this investigation through to its end with the RPD and our law enforcement partners. But again, that's not abnormal. It's something we do in all the cases such as this one. Thank you. Another term that's been thrown out there is explosives. Um, is that how it's, uh, I guess, approached in this scenario? So, well, I, I, I saw the term explosives, too. I mean, uh, without looking up the exact definition of what an explosive is or isn't, they were cans of gasoline. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's out there, a lot of articles, things that we're seeing that, you know, are inflammatory. There were cans of gasoline um, that he used to ignite the vehicle. Correct. Chief, to your knowledge, did he have any interactions with anyone in the Rochester area while he was here from the 27th on? Did he have any friends here? Any connections whatsoever? None that we've identified thus far. Chief, just to clarify, the, was it the collision that caused the fire, or had he actually lit the gas can prior to the crash? Yeah, uh, again, that we're going to have to wait until arson finishes their investigation. Can you tell how fast he was going? He did speed up, and I have seen the video, um, but it's a, been a long time since I was certified in radar or estimating vehicle speed. So, again, we'll let the investigation play out for that. I Fast. Fast. As the mayor said. Sped up or sped toward the he did. The yes, you can clearly see that. It was intentional. 500 feet or so. Do you believe he was aware that? That the concert was happening there, or he just happened to see a bunch of people and thought that that was an opportunity. Well, again, we're going to have to let the investigation play out. Right. So, one pedestrian uh, has suffered life-altering injuries. Um, the rest should make full recoveries. I can tell you the two uh, two of my officers that were at the scene, as well as the off-duty officer uh, that rendered aid, um, are taking a little time off. Um, they have obviously some emotional issues they need to deal with as well. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you. Can you tell us what town that Avery is from in Syracuse to narrow that down a little? I don't have.